what is up guys I am Naga220 and today I will be doing a very brief summary of what to expect from the highly anticipated 1.4 patch for Tom Clancy's The Division that's scheduled for release on October 25th as well as share my thoughts on whether or not this patch is capable of breathing new life into the game. Make no mistake guys, Massive has undertaken a huge endeavor here trying to salvage this game. They have really made a genuine effort to engage the community and I for one am excited to see how well they utilize the feedback they received over the past three months. Patch 1.4 drastically changes the way the game currently plays. This is a huge patch and it is going to be a big deal among longtime fans of The Division, myself included, whom have stuck with this game and really endured some of the absolute worst game breaking bugs I have ever seen in any AAA online game. I am only going to touch on the changes I believe are instrumental in the revitalization of the game and no doubt will significantly affect the core gameplay for the majority of current and potentially returning players. Now the first major change that patch 1.4 brings is the introduction of world tiers. This is an ingenious system that adds tons of replayability and value by simply allowing players to not only control the difficulty of the NPCs they encounter, but also the quality of the loot drops by the said NPCs. Is it original? Of course not. We have seen this type of system and the benefits that comes with it in many other games, more notably Diablo 3. Now there's a total of 4 world tiers. Tier 1 consists of level 30 enemies with 163 gear score drops. Tier 2 consists of level 31 enemies with 182 gear score drops and also unlocks the challenge difficulty and the incursions. Tier 3 consists of level 32 enemies with 204 gear score item drops and last but by no means least, tier 4 has level 33 enemies with 229 gear score item drops. Of course, in order to accommodate this new tier system, enemy level and gear scores had to be completely reworked. So the max gear score is now 229 and the max enemy level is now 33. I can tell you after spending countless hours on the PTS, this new system works flawlessly. The second set of major changes are with regards to loot and rewards. All NPCs found in-game, regardless of location, now has a drop chance probability for high-end and gear set items, with veteran and elite NPCs having a slightly higher probability than the normal enemies. This is an absolutely amazing change, and when you combine this with the world tier system, you have a scenario where doing any activity in the game is now worth your time, because there's a core mechanic in place that has the ability to reward you with relevant loot for simply killing enemies. Let's think about this for a second. Killing enemies is the one activity in this game that you do consistently and constantly. And now that you can be rewarded for that tremendously improves the player experience. Toss in the return of roaming NPC groups and bosses on a 4 hour timer, improved rewards for killing these bosses, Removal of gear set waiting from all activities except incursions of course and the ability for any gear set piece to drop from any activity. The light zone has now been completely transformed from a gorgeously designed underutilized section of the map with absolutely zero incentive for endgame exploration 
into a viable alternative to the Dark Zone with regards to item farming. In addition to this, you now continue to receive XP from activities in the Light Zone after hitting the level 30 cap. This XP doesn't go towards your level, but rather unlocking a high-end item cache that also has a probability of producing a gear set item when opened. This is just mind-blowing, and I really think Massive is finally onto something here. Definitely a step in the right direction when you consider how many people quit playing the Division due to the way the game forced you into the Dark Zone, which at the time was infested with hackers and game-breaking bugs in order to progress your characters. Let me state, I personally do not have any issue with the concept of the Dark Zone, but like most things that sound really cool on paper, when put into practice turns out to be not as good as the initial idea. So even though Massive has clearly stated that the focus of this patch is to rebalance the core gameplay and not PvP experience, they did rework several of the base and signature skills which will inevitably change the PvP meta as witnessed on the PTS. Shared cooldowns on signature skills for players in a group, the nerfing of survivor link, enabling recovery link to proc automatically when your HP is really low if soloing, Combined with the extensive changes to weapon talents, mods, the introduction of real weapon recoil, PvP has now become enjoyable again. Though we will have to wait and see what Massive does to address the many issues that currently plagues the Dark Zone. Patch 1.4, in my opinion, is single-handedly going to save the division. It may not revitalize it 100%, but it's going to make the game a much more rewarding, tolerable, and enjoyable experience for current players and returning players alike. I believe with simple quality of life changes that are littered all across this patch and an example of this is weapon skins no longer occupying inventory space that may seem like a very subtle change but that is this is such a huge deal for, for for me especially and i'm sure it's a big deal for a lot of other players the fact that shotgunners can't insta kill you anymore because they've reworked time to kill and time to be killed these things are going to make all the difference I really hope the Division does a complete 180 with this patch. This is an absolutely amazing game. The experience that I had with the Division leveling from 1 to 30 was phenomenal. The problem was post level 30 activities. The Dark Zone to me was not a real end game activity. I enjoyed playing in the Dark Zone, but a lot of people didn't like the idea of having to PvP in order to progress your character, especially when that PvP involved being deprived of precious Dark Zone experience as well as loot. Not to mention a lot of players were peeved with the Underground DLC because it was a good alternative to the Dark Zone but it was hidden behind a paywall. You had to have a season pass or purchase the DLC and some of the item sets that drop there, you couldn't get it anywhere else in the game. Luckily, they've changed all of that, and I think that's changed for the better. Anyways, this concludes my summary of patch 1.4. If you found this video useful or helpful in any way, be sure to leave a like and hit the subscribe button. Once again, my name is Naga220, and I will see you in The Division.